friends, in this video I'm going to orchestrate from scratch one of the most beautiful pieces in the history of music. The composer is Beethoven and we're talking about the second movement of the seventh symphony. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to show you how you can get realistic sounding orchestral arrangements inside your DAW. Let's get started. One of my favorite videos that I've ever created for this channel has been the recreation of Mozart's Lacrimosa. If you haven't watched this video, I'm gonna link it right here. But I know that many of you have watched it already and many of you have been asking me for more videos like this. So here it is. Today, we're going to orchestrate the second movement of uh, Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. And what a piece of music. What a theme. This is a genius piece and I'm also going to try and give you a little bit of musicological twist to this thing so it's not going to be just recording notes inside Cubase. I have the score right here next to me. It's the full score. I actually needed to find this. It's not easy to find orchestral scores anymore, you know, printed and everything. And I think this is very interesting because this part relies heavily on the string arrangement. This is a very challenging piece to orchestrate inside a DAW because it's all about the details. Let's start. So what I have here is uh, Hollywood Strings 2. These are the strings that I'm going to use. This is a new library by East West. This is their sequel to the Hollywood Strings 1. I love this library. I've included it in my favorite string libraries, but this is supposed to be a more intimate sounding library, smaller sections, more definition, and I think this is going to work great for this piece. This video is brought to you by East West and the weird thing about this theme is that it's so simple, so minimal, but it's the whole arrangement that makes it special. So here's the theme, just the single notes. So as you can hear, this cannot get any simpler than this. This is one of the most unremarkable melodies ever written. One note. Now. You like that melody? You do? And so do I. But is it a melody? No. It's such a basic melody, but we're going to see how this will evolve and expand using the orchestration in the strings, but then later on the woodwinds, the brass and the percussion. Now let's play all the voices with the counter melodies. And check what's going on with the score because this is very important. We have to get the phrasing right, we have to get the dynamics right, we have to get the whole movement and feel right. As you can see, this is the melodic line for the violas. This is written in the alto clef. We can see D here, but we're actually going to play E. Uh, this is a little bit of a <laughs> weird thing to get used to if you've never played the alto clef. Now, the second thing that I want to draw your attention to is the dynamics. It starts with piano and then it keeps going, then we go pianissimo. So we have to make sure that we're able to replicate this with our sample library. This means we have to plan ahead about our dynamics. Where am I going to set my piano dynamics in my mod wheel and my expression settings. The next thing that we need to get right for this piece is the actual pulse, the actual phrasing. And as you can see, we're going bum, 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 bum. 
Here we have some divisis. The most important thing is to get this right. Now, this is a staccato dot. Many people think that these staccato dots are supposed to be played really short with a kind of a punctuation style. But for this slow piece, it just means that the notes need to be disconnected and you can see we have these staccato dots here but we also have these slurs here these should feel like the same phrase but disconnected so we have to keep that in mind these are all small things but they do make a big difference when you're orchestrating anything that's orchestral then you will notice that this melody is overtaken by the second violin it's going to be exactly the same here and then later on it's overtaken by the first violin and everything else shifts so beethoven does some crazy orchestration stuff here that's genius with the same theme over and over again no changes whatsoever and then when we have the fortissimo again we have to plan ahead for all these things the horns take over and we have this majestic, epic development for this theme until we go over here where the woodwinds are going to take a more important role. I'm going to orchestrate up to this point because it's extremely interesting what's going on here. And of course, I don't want the video to be three hours long. I'm going to use the violas as my first instrument just because this is the first instrument that carries the melody. So what I have here is the Kiss Switch Master Patch from Hollywood Strings 2 for the viola. I have the Soft Mood. And the first tip I want to give you when you're orchestrating things like this is pay attention to the details. For example, I found that for this specific piece, it really made a huge difference when I loaded all the different microphones that are available for the Hollywood Strings 2. And I chose the soft mood because for this piece I felt it works better uh, than the classic and the epic. You will see that I'm not using the same mood for every one of the sections. As I said, I have to be very, very careful with how I handle my dynamics here. Here I have my expression, here I have my modulation wheel. The modulation wheel with Hollywood Strings 2, like with Hollywood Strings 1, controls the vibrato intensity. So. So I can start like this. So this is going to be my fortissimo. I already plan ahead about the positioning of my faders here. This is going to be my piano. And this is going to be my pianissimo. Next tip I want to give you is creating your expression map. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a part right here for my violas. I want to welcome you to the beauty of Cubase expression maps. With Hollywood Strings, I was really surprised to find that you can extract the expression maps straight away in Cubase. So if I go to my expression map tab, I can see all the expressions right here. But if you don't see this in the first place, you can just go right here and select import key switches and everything is going to be ready for you. So if I open this, you will see that I have all the different key switches right here. So I'm going to start with a sustained full so I don't have to change key switches while I'm playing. And right here on this bar, I'm going to switch to the legato bow change. So now that I've done this, I'm ready to go. I don't have to worry about changing key switches. I can go straight away and start recording.
Okay, I want to say something here. This is extremely important. When you read the score, you see all these slurs and these are indications of the phrasing. And I've talked about phrasing in a previous video. I think it's one of the most important things in music. You can see very easily how you need to phrase for this piece of music. So for example, let's take this counter melody that the viola plays here. So it's See, the line stops here. Then we go here. So all these, these are little phrases. These should be disconnected when they finish. So you shouldn't connect them. So one thing that I have to fix straight away that I didn't play it with the right phrasing is right here when we go. See, I connected this. This is not how it's supposed to be played. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this note. Let's play it again. This is how it should be played. Again, I'm showing you as many different tips as I can give you, but this, uh, trust me, make all the difference. If you just play a melody or if you just type it into the computer, it's not going to sound musical. And one thing that I want to say again is I'm not going to use quantize at all. Quantize is forbidden in this case. I'm not going to quantize anything. If you've ever listen to a real orchestra, even the most perfect orchestras and the best conductors, we have a little bit of a human thing. They cannot start at the same time, all of the musicians, depending on how good the conductor is and the musicians, they might be tighter, of course, but there's always going to be a few milliseconds of difference. So don't quantize, don't copy parts. The next thing I'm going to play is the cellos. We have two cellos. We have the celli that play the melody and then we have a second section of uh, cellos that play the same thing with the double basses. Now I have to adjust my dynamics. I feel that the cello right now is overpowering the violas. So I'm going to be a little bit lower in volume. So as you can see, the cello join the violins on this last melody that we played in Legato. Now let's play the double basses and the cello that double the double basses. So in order to do this and to have a more cohesive sound, because this is my bass section, I have loaded two instances in uh, the East West Opus. So I have the cello Legato right here with the epic mood in this case. And I also have the basses with the epic mood again and I'm going to play both of them at the same time.
And from now on, we're going to start introducing our crescendo. So our basses go... And then Beethoven fills the harmony with these kind of arpeggios. So again, these we have to phrase right. So it should be like... And for these ones, of course, I use legato. Okay, second violins, again, they start with the same melody. They take over. And then we switch to legato and we play the counter melody. One thing that I want to do in this case is because the melody again starts with a I want to make sure that this makes an entrance so that we hear that there's another voice coming in with the second violins but then I'm going to tone it down a little bit and then I'm going to make it shine again when it goes So I'm going to take the interesting parts of each melodic line and I'm going to make them shine. And when they play repeated notes, I'm going to just make it a little bit lower. First violins. Can we just take a moment and appreciate how much of a genius Beethoven was? You see the same melody being repeated over and over throughout the string section. That's why I wanted to make this piece. It's brilliant the way it's orchestrated. I'm going to layer these first violins and I'm going to do this with one of my favorite libraries, of course, Hollywood Strings 1. These two libraries, I have to tell you, they blend very, very well together. So again, and I think you can hear the difference very clearly in tone. So now if I add the first violins as well, we're going to get a much fuller sound. So the Hollywood Strings 2 gives me a lot more definition for these notes, for these tenutas, for all these things, where this one gives me this lush Hollywood sound.
crescendo. Forte. Fortissimo. And we do a decrescendo in the end. So now we've completed our strings. What I would do in this case is I would listen to the whole thing and I would start doing micro adjustments in terms of dynamics, in terms of expression, just to make this absolutely perfect. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to record the woodwinds and then we're going to go to the big bombastic horns. So let's start with the woodwinds. The first thing that appears is the oboes and the bassoons. So let's go here to the oboes. In this case, I'm using the Hollywood orchestral woodwinds and let's see what they play. And then... Then fortissimo. Yeah, they take the melody as well. Then we have the bassoons. Brilliant. The clarinets are clarinets in A and guess what? They play the theme again. And of course the flutes. It's so incredible that uh, Beethoven took this little motif Bum, 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 bum. just a pulse, the same note, and now in this section distributes this to the entire woodwind orchestra. Classical composers used layering that we think we're using right now for seams and kick drums and snares back in the day. They would layer the woodwinds with the brass, with the string instruments, and they would create this massive orchestral sound that we all know. And now we have the fortissimo. For the fortissimo, we have timpanis as well. So one of the things that was very common in this classical era was that the timpanis would be doubled by the trumpets. And this is exactly what we have here. So we have... And then we have the trumpets do exactly the same thing like the timpanis. Boom. And last but not least, the horns that also take over this melody. These are horns in E. I have to admit, I, I even have trouble reading this. But basically, when you see a C, that means that it's an E. So when we come here, we see that we have 
E. So there it is, we recorded all the parts of this piece. Right now, I don't have much work to do. I can just fine tune the controllers, I can fine tune the dynamics. If you do everything that I showed you, your mixing is going to be so much easier because right now, I need to do very minimal mixing. And of course, if you're interested in mastering classical music, orchestral music, I've done three mastering courses and you can check them out. Actually, I'm talking about mastering classical orchestral music in the analog mastering course that I've created. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Spoiler alert, for this specific piece, I would definitely use a mastering EQ like a Manly Massive Passive, which is, by the way, what I'm showing on my course. And I would use no compression. I would use other things to make the sound bigger and more full. If you watched up to this point, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are a member of the channel, there's going to be an extended version of this video with even more tips and tricks, you can watch it in your member area. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you're interested in Hollywood Strings 2, I'm going to have a link down below. Thank you, East West, for supporting the channel one more time. Let me know if you want me to do more of these. Let me know which piece I should do next. And I'll see you on the next one, my friends. Oh, and don't forget to watch any of these two videos. Have a good one. Bye-bye.